What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Paddock, and today we are going to talk all about jazz style. Today, we are going to break down an eight measure bebop line that is made up of mostly eighth notes. Now, when it comes to making your eighth notes sound a lot more interesting, you have to get creative because you don't have a lot of rhythm to bring out articulations. So you're going to have to use goal notes or figure out which are the most important eighth notes to bring out to make this line really come alive. So I'm going to play the line without any of the extra articulations so you can hear what it sounds like on its own. And then we're going to transform this line using articulations. When I play it like that, it sounds okay. The notes are right, the rhythms are fine. I'm swinging the eighth notes, but it really doesn't have any style to it. And that is because I'm not making anything sound more important. So what we need to do is figure out what the important notes are in this eighth note line and bring them out so that the line has more direction. So when I'm talking about the more important notes, I like to call them goal notes, G-O-A-L, goal notes, because those are your main notes that you're going towards. So when you bring these goal notes out, you can really transform a line. So I'm gonna put this line up again, but this time I'm gonna highlight the goal notes in yellow. So I'll play through it and you're gonna hear a gigantic difference in the way this line sounds. As you can hear, when I bring out the right stuff, the line has a lot more direction and it sounds a whole lot better. So let's break this down and talk about what notes we're bringing out and why. Take a listen to these first two measures without any goal notes. That sounds okay, but when I bring out the A, the B flat, and the C, I get a lot more direction. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing out the top note of each of these patterns. So you can hear those descending notes going to the A, then dropping back down and going to the B flat. Now with the C, the C is a direction change note. And when I bring that note out, it kind of switches up the articulations a little bit and makes it sound a whole lot more interesting. By bringing out that C, it just gives you something unexpected by switching up the way I'm articulating this phrase. Take a listen to me playing this without bringing out the C. That sounds fine, but when I bring out the A, the B flat, and the C, the line really comes alive. Now let's take a look at this third measure. You can see that we have a C sharp on the end of one that I am bringing out as a goal note. Whenever you have a large interval jump, especially to a high note, you're always going to bring that top note out. Now, I am also bringing out the A on beat two, and the reason for that is because it is a first note of a triplet. Whenever you have the first note of a triplet, you're always gonna bring that out, and then you're gonna bring out the land note after the triplet. So you can see I'm bringing out the D sharp also. So you're gonna bring out the first note of the triplet and the note that comes after the triplet. So in this case, I'm gonna bring out the A and the D sharp. Now with the triplet, I'm not really gonna accent it too hard. I'm not really gonna bring it out a whole lot. I'm just gonna tongue that note and then slur the next two notes in the triplet. So when I'm talking about goal notes, I'm not necessarily talking about accenting them or playing them really hard. I'm just talking about leaning into them and making them sound a little bit more important. Take a listen to this third measure. That sounds a whole lot better than when I'm not bringing anything out. So when you bring out the right stuff, it really makes the line have a lot more direction. If you're a saxophone player who would like to dive deeper into the world of jazz style, I'd like to invite you to come check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I have an entire course dedicated to the unwritten rules of jazz style. So I show them to you one at a time. I show you how to recognize them in music and I show you how to incorporate, incorporate it into anything that you are playing. 
So if you really want to get your jazz style down and make your phrases and lines sound a whole lot cooler, you are definitely going to want to check out that course. In addition to the jazz style course, I also have pathway courses that will take your playing to the next level, whether you're a beginner, intermediate player, all the way up until early advanced. So if you'd like to level up your saxophone playing, then stop by the Scott Paddock Sax School. I'll put a link in the video description below. Now you can see that I'm bringing that B flat out on the end of four. Now the reason I'm doing that is because we have a change of direction coming. Normally I would bring out the direction change note, which is the A, but if I do that, it sounds really predictable and a little cheesy. Take a listen. When I do that, it just doesn't sound very good. If I bring out that B flat as an anticipation to the direction change, then it sounds a whole lot more interesting. So it sets up that direction change and it just makes it sound a whole lot cooler. Now in the next measure, the fourth measure, I have another direction change and that happens on that high C and I do bring out the direction change note. So if I were to bring out the direction change note on the A and the direction change note on the C, it would just start to sound hokey and it wouldn't be cool at all. Take a listen to these first four measures with all of the goal notes. That sounds a whole lot better than Goal notes make a really big difference. While we're in the middle of talking about style, I want you to leave me a comment below with a saxophone player that you can recognize immediately just by the way they use articulations. For me, it would be Cannonball Adderley for sure, as well as Dexter Gordon. Uh, if I get a lot of people saying the same names of saxophone players, I'll do a style breakdown for their articulations. So let's take a look at the second line starting with the G. You can see that the G is definitely a goal note. Everything is landing on that and then the line changes after that. So we definitely want to bring this G out as a goal note because that's where the whole first line is leading to. Now after that we have the F sharp on beat three and it is a quarter note on the beat. Whenever you have a quarter note on the beat, you're going to want to bring it out as a dop. So a short and fat squatty note. And then we have the E on the and of four and that is a quarter note. Whenever you have a quarter note on the and of the beat, you want to accent it. So if it's a quarter note on the beat, you dop it. That means short and fat and squatty. And if it is on the end of the beat, if there's a quarter note on the end of the beat, you want to accent it. That means you're going to play it full value, but you're going to hit it hard. Take a listen from measure four. Now take a listen to it without the articulations. There is a gigantic difference. So you want to make sure that you're using these goal notes to make your jazz lines sound a whole lot cooler. The F sharp on the end of two of measure six is the continuation of this phrase after the quarter notes. So we want to make sure that we're bringing that note out to get the phrase going again. That high B flat is a direction change note. So we definitely want to bring that note out as well. Now in measure seven on the end of two, I am bringing out this C. The reason I'm bringing the C out is to make the line sound more interesting. I could either bring nothing out or bring the B flat out and that would be predictable and it would sound okay. But if I bring this C out, it makes it sound a whole lot more interesting. So I'm going to start at measure five and I'm going to bring the C out and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Now this time I'm going to play it again and I'm not going to bring the C out and listen to how it changes the line. It sounds fine like that, but when I bring the C out, it definitely makes the line sound a whole lot more interesting and it sets up the end of this phrase where I dop that F on beat one and I dop that note because it's a quarter note on the beat. So the C kind of sets up that F. Now I could also tongue the B flat on beat three, but again, that's going to sound super predictable and isn't going to sound as interesting. That sounds okay, but a little hokey to me. 
uh, bringing out beats one and three really strong. So I think by bringing out that C, it makes the line sound a whole lot more interesting. Take a listen to the last line with all of the articulations that I've been talking about. Now I'm gonna play the entire eight bar phrase at a medium tempo so you can hear all of the articulations that I've added in. That definitely brings the line alive and makes it sound a whole lot better. Now I'm gonna play this at a faster tempo and when I play a bebop line at a faster tempo and I bring out goal notes, it makes the line sound really cool because it gives it a lot of direction. When you're playing eighth notes at a fast tempo, they have a tendency just to sound like a big run on sentence. But if you bring out goal notes, if you bring out direction changes, if you bring out stuff in your eighth note lines, even though you're only playing eighth notes, it has a lot of forward motion to it. Take a listen to what I'm talking about. So even though I'm only playing eighth notes, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. If you were just listening to it, you might even think that I'm playing more complex rhythms than just eighth notes because I'm bringing so much stuff out and adding so much texture to the line. So when it comes to adding style to your jazz phrases, I want you to think about articulations, goal notes, and making the line have forward direction. You will always wanna have direction in your phrases. That's gonna make them sound really cool. If not, they're gonna sit there and be really flat. So use goal notes and articulations to make your jazz phrases sound a whole lot better. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. Uh-huh.